patent infringement is probably a widespread phenomenon. And the patent holder may sue the infringer, or the alleged infringer for patent infringement, and a common reaction by the alleged infringer then is to uh, challenge validity of the patent in court. To give an example, many smartphones used to have this feature of slide to unlock so that you could unlock the screen by sliding over it with the finger and the picture would move with the finger. Apple, however, had a patent on this feature, so many other smartphone manufacturers had to remove that feature from their phones, including my phone. But then later, courts invalidated Apple's patents in Germany but also in other countries because they found so-called prior art. That means an earlier invention, in that case a Swedish handset, had a very similar feature. But nonetheless, the user experience of many millions of smartphone owners had been changed. And in some cases, such situations when a feature has to be removed can really mean a financial uh, burden on the alleged infringer, which in the end is not an infringer at all. Relatively speaking, uh, the share of invalidated patents is very high in Germany, but also in other countries. Of about 100 decisions that are taken every year in Germany in cases of patent validity challenges, only about 22% are fully upheld. 45% are fully invalidated and another 33 are partially invalidated. That is um, bad news for the patent holders, obviously, because they could not rely on their patent. But it's also very bad news for all the other firms, which are unduly restricted by patents that should not have been granted in the first place, so that have been incorrectly granted because the courts, after a more careful examination, find no, there was prior art or some other reason why it shouldn't have been granted. Now, the question, of course, is how big is that problem in general? Because the number of court cases is small. We have about 600,000 active patents in Germany. And the question is, what share of these patents, if they were taken to court and someone invested money in invalidation, what share of these would be invalidated? That is a non-obvious question. It's actually a very difficult question to answer because there are opposing selection effects. On the one hand, only robust patents might become subject of infringement litigation. But then on the other hand, only weak patents might be challenged in court. And the question is, how do these opposing selection effects play out? And that's the question that uh, Dr. Hans Tischka and I are addressing in our study, which is based on his doctoral thesis here at TUM. We used three approaches to study that question. So we did interviews with patent attorneys and experts, including lawyers and, and judges, um, to understand how these selection effects work. Then to get a more quantitative idea of these effects, we had a survey with more than 300 participants, patent attorneys and lawyers. And finally, did an econometric analysis of about 300 court decisions, where we analyzed the determinants of invalidation and then used another set of patents to make a prediction, so-called out of sample. So what would it mean for patents that were not challenged in court? What we find is basically consistent across all three methods. We find that the share of patents that would be invalidated if taken to court in the population of all patents would be roughly the same as for patents that really receive a court decision. So roughly one quarter or less would be fully upheld, 40-45% would be fully invalidated and the remainder partially invalidated. So what does that mean? First of all, it's bad news for patent holders because if their patents are challenged in court, there's a pretty high risk that they're going to be invalidated. But it's even more bad news for all the more numerous firms that do not carry, do not own patents because they are unduly restricted by patents that were incorrectly granted, according to our analysis. Second, it means that patent examiners should be granted more time rather than less in examining patent and doing search for prior art. So in particular, the push at the European Patent Office for a uh, higher efficiency in patent examination appears very questionable in that regard. Third, I should mention that it is not a German-specific problem. We have indications that 
similar results would be obtained in other countries. And finally, the question is what could be done? What we suggest is to increase the required inventive step for patent grant significantly, such that the number of granted patents is reduced dramatically to maybe only maybe one third of what we have today, but at the same time make it harder to invalidate patents once they are granted. And this way the patent system would get back certainty that is very much needed to promote innovation.